The Large Hadron Collider is just as exciting as it sounds. It's the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, and it helps us discover brand new subatomic particles. One of the most recent newbies is called, uh, this. And it's a pentaquark, which is a kind of exotic hadron, which means what exactly? And how does it fit into, or potentially break, our modern understanding of quantum physics? To get there, we need to start with the basics, the good old standard model. It's the set of mathematical principles that over time and with experimental verification has resulted in a widely accepted physics theory. It's an organized way of looking at the elementary particles and fundamental forces of the universe much in the same way that the periodic table has organized the chemical elements. The standard model is broken into two big categories. Fermions are the smallest unit of matter we currently know of. We cannot break them down into anything smaller. The fundamental forces are what act on the universe. The strong force, weak force, electromagnetic force, and gravitational force. All of the forces, except gravity, have a carrier particle, and these are called bosons. Within the fermions are another two categories, quarks and leptons. Quarks are fast-moving points of energy, and so far, we've identified six kinds, three pairs of two. The stable matter in the universe is made up of that first generation of quarks, the up and down quark. And for context, all protons are made up of one down and two up quarks, and neutrons are made up of two down and one up quark, held together by the strong force. In the next generation, we have the charm quark and the strange quark. And the last delightfully named pair is the top or truth and bottom or beauty quark. Then we have the other big chunk within the fermions, the leptons. Quarks make up protons and neutrons, while the leptons are a class of particles that includes the electron. Just like with quarks, we've got six particles here, three pairs of two, the electron and its pair, the electron neutrino, the muon and the muon neutrino, and the tau and the tau neutrino. The electron, muon, and tau particles all have mass, while their neutrino counterparts are like their ghosts, with no charge, almost no mass, hardly interacting with any other matter at all. Whew, okay, we made it through the fermions. Then we have the bosons, the particles that carry the universe's fundamental forces. The gluon carries the strong force, which is what binds the nucleus of an atom. You could say it glues things together. The friendly and familiar photon is what carries the electromagnetic force, and the W and Z bosons carry the weak force, the force responsible for radioactive decay, among other things. And to finish off our current standard model, which is undeniably incomplete, and I promise we're working our way up to that particle I mentioned at the beginning, we've got the Higgs boson. This name may ring a few bells, as it's been featured all over the news in recent years. It's famous, but... Why? Well, one important part of the standard model is a hypothetical quantum field that's what gives the particles their mass, and it's called the Higgs field, which, because the field behaves with wave-particle duality, is carried by the Higgs boson, much like the fundamental forces are carried by their bosons. The experimental confirmation of the Higgs boson by the LHC in 2012 was a Nobel Prize-winning breakthrough. Now that we know this particle exists and how to find it, we're able to learn more about it and how it behaves with other particles like fermions, helping us understand how the Higgs field imparts mass onto the other particles. It's totally fine if your brain is breaking at this point. A saying attributed to Richard Feynman, one of the most renowned theoretical physicists of the 20th century, is that anyone who claims to understand quantum mechanics does not. There's so much more detail here that we're not going into, like color charge and spin dynamics that we could talk about for literally years. So if that's something you're interested in, let us know in the comments below. But since the discovery of the Higgs boson, no new fundamental particles have come out of the LHC. So what are these new discoveries? Well, the pentaquark just discovered is what's called a composite particle, specifically an exotic hadron. Hadrons are the class of subatomic particles made up of clusters of quarks. The proton, for example, is a hadron. The Large Hadron Collider is so named because it smashes together protons or other ions that all belong to the hadron family. Hadrons come in different configurations, either in quark-antiquark -quark pairs, which are known as mesons, or groups of three quarks, known as baryons, all held together by the strong force. There are a few rebels, however, that don't fit into this model, and these are called exotic hadrons. 
Predicted decades ago, they were experimentally discovered in 2014 and are made up of configurations of quarks that don't fit into the conventional hadron blueprint. This new pentaquark is one such exotic hadron and, as its name suggests, is made up of five quarks. While it may not necessarily add another dot to the standard model, studying its formation, decay, and how all the quarks within that particle interact with each other tells us a lot about the behavior of both hadrons and quarks. These kinds of unstable, short-lived particles may not be ones we interact with on a daily basis, but they are very similar to matter and energy interactions that exist inside extreme astrophysical environments, like neutron stars. Studying these particles here on Earth helps us better understand those kinds of events. The standard model is our best way of organizing our existing understanding of the quantum world. In using the best facilities in the world, like the LHC, we push the boundaries of how much of this behavior we can actually see in our attempts to experimentally verify the standard model. You may notice, however, that gravity, the fourth fundamental force, is conspicuously absent from the standard model as a force-carrying particle. The the current standard model of quantum physics and the theory of general relativity are fundamentally at odds with one another. If one is correct, our understanding of the other has to shift. Like we're trying to fill out the structure of the standard model with experimental data, new astrophysics research aims to support Einstein's theory of general relativity, which could make us rethink physics as a whole, including the quantum stuff. Besides the excitement of actually finding the particles we've been looking for for decades because their existence is predicted by the standard model, new experimental evidence of particles like this tells us more about how all the particles in the standard model interact with each other, why they have the properties they have, and could clue us in on how to look for the stuff we're still missing. All just by smashing stuff together. If you want more mind-breaking quantum physics, check out my video on string theory here. And let us know in the comments below what else you'd like us to cover in the quantum realm. Make sure you're subscribed to Seeker for all your particle breakthrough updates. And as always, thanks for watching.